Y254 Imagine Welcome back and if you just tuned in this is Y254 the debrief continues with a discussion women in power and leadership I'm speaking to Wendy Aura she's the chair the young women uh, leaders connect how are you I'm fine and you Happy to have you here. It's my pleasure. We have been having trouble with the women uh, crying out that one of them is being uh, fought. And I'm speaking in regards to what happens to Kirinyaga governor. Uh, and Waigoro people are saying, some of the people are saying she's being fought because she's a woman. And now we have uh, hosting uh, plans by members or the MCs of Kitui. They are planning to host Osta Charity in Gilo. What do you make of all these events politically? Okay, thank you for having me. Um, I'd like to say that uh, the Waiguru impeachment that was done recently by the MCs is not really because she's a woman. I don't think uh, it's about the gender that really matters here. Mm -hmm. Our Honorable Waiguru was elected by Kirinyaga people right. and the MCs in Kirinyaga are the voices, they represent the voices of the people. So if the MCs felt that there is, there is a, there's a gap somewhere in her leadership, mm -hmm. there's like some questions to be answered, then they, they, that's why they did the process of, uh, of impeachment. Mm -hmm. And um, what we need to, to now understand is uh, we hope that the Senate coming, uh, we wait for, as we wait for the report from the Senate, mm -hmm. we hope that uh, it will be purely objective and n nothing political attached. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you look at how the Senate was going, uh, was going about with the, whether to go the pl plenary or the committee way, mm -hmm. it just shows that th there's, there's a way, there's lack of, in of dependence, of independence in the Senate. Right. Because uh, how, if you look at the ones, who, the people wanted plenary in Waiguru's case, they mm -hmm. they wanted different thing mm -hmm. for white to scares True. yeah so it just mean it just shows that that um, everything changes according to the politics of the time mm -hmm. the political temperature at the moment and we just hope that uh, going forward that uh, Waiguru is given a chance to defend herself we have the structures like ESC DCI they need to maybe probe in, into the matter and be able so that the Kirinyaga people and Kenyans mm -hmm. are able to to know if really there was an abuse of office and uh, gross misconduct. Mm -hmm. But as for uh, for now, as I speak, uh, I just want to say that we need to wait to see if the Senate is going to do the right thing. But uh, uh, talking about being targeted as a woman, I, I don't think uh, that's true mm -hmm. because. Uh, when she, right now as she holds the, the the office of the governor, she is a leader. She's not looked at as a oh, woman. Okay. So she's a leader, and if you saw Waititu went through impeachment, and like any other governor, she's she's capable of going through the same. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's about gender that should be uh, the gender card that should be played right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at now Ngilu. Honorable Ngenu, almost being ousted. Uh, we just hope, I just hope as a young person that uh, all these are not political, are not tied to mm -hmm. political, uh, to settling political and personal scores. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, in the recent, uh, in, the, in the house recently, mm -hmm. when the CIA Senator, James Orengo, he just said, and declared on the floor that there, there's someone that is behind Waiguru, Waiguru's impeachment. Mm -hmm. So if a, an experienced leader, someone we trust and uh, has been there in the Senate for some time now, mm -hmm. if he's able to speak that, then you know as Kenyans, we also have questions. Not true. We also have to question, is there, w what political games are being played? You mm -hmm. know, so that's the worry of Kenyans. Okay. Is it a, a genuine impeachment or is it just settling political scores. Uh, speaking of uh, settling political scores, uh, in the recent days we have been seeing the clean up of the Jubilee House and yeah. maybe if we could be having that uh, particular image of the persons who are holding now the higher office or the bigger offices in the country, they are all male. We do not have women. If you could look up from the 
speakers of the National Assembly and the Senate, we have both male. Uh, coming down, we do not have any woman. Uh, would you say the woman has been undermined? And for a long time, uh, the Kenyan Parliament or the, uh, the, uh, the Kenyan House has been calling for that. Uh, uh, that role, and, uh, and the women would not turn up, and now they are not into picture. What do you make of the recent events? Now, when I look at this picture, <clears throat> it's just an illustration that uh, the fact that we still do not factor gender when mm -hmm. making decisions, and that's so unfortunate because uh, in this era in time, we expect because we have women leaders who have proven mm -hmm. to have. Uh, a track record of good leadership, it's just unfortunate that we can't have great positions for them also in the party. Mm -hmm. uh, you see now, it's about, we still have existing patriarchal, uh, uh, patriarchal structures in our politics. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, as much as uh, the women were doing well and we are getting more of them into the politics, mm -hmm. uh, there's still gaps, we still have blocks. We still have blocks, in, especially in leadership positions at party levels. And as you know, in Kenya, political parties is central in politics. So if you can't have women having leadership roles, this one is for Jubilee. Mm -hmm. And it's, a, it's the major party right now in Kenya. Mm -hmm. If it does not, it cannot factor women into leadership. Yet we have very powerful women, uh, those those are very vocal and working hard in the in the parties. Mm -hmm. I think it's just about the patriarchy that still exists within the systems, mm -hmm. and uh, it's not. It's the patriarchy. We what we need to do is just we need to also create uh, space, uh, safe spaces for for women leaders mm -hmm. to create those systems to be able to combat the patriarchal systems. Mm -hmm. That's the only way. Otherwise, uh, if we if we continue maybe with the, just tolerating the whole system, then I don't think it will favor us. Mm -hmm. And you know, in politics, women leaders have to stand for themselves. They have to, they have to prove themselves always. Mm -hmm. And right now, if we see this, what's happening, it just means that uh, we still have not taken it seriously. Mm -hmm. the, the ability, the capability, the strength of women leaders in this country. Okay. This just, and this is just an example. In the recent cases, um, I've seen webinars where we have just men in the panel. We mm -hmm. call them panelists, mm -hmm. yeah? And we were discussing this recently with some friends and we were like, a whole ministry. Mm -hmm. Can't they find women who are in the ministry? Mm -hmm. Those who are in the sector, they can't miss to find a woman in the sure. sector. Mm -hmm. So it just means that the society still does not embrace uh, women leadership to its core, right. the way it should. Mm -hmm. And this, this uh, this will take some time because patriarchy uh, is something that exists in all levels, from the grassroots to the top levels. Okay. So I think it's not something that it's going to be fought tomorrow or in the near future, but consistently, when as women leaders, they have to stand up for themselves. They have to keep on fighting mm -hmm. so that their voices may be heard. But it's just an unfortunate thing that at this era, we still can't, we are still closing our eyes to the reality mm -hmm. of women leadership. Yeah, you spoke of uh, learning yourself and putting yourself available for leadership and uh, uh, here brings me to the point of uh, young women uh, connect. You are the chair, how did the dream come about and maybe you could tell us about the journey. Okay, um, it was co-founded by also a friend, Claire Ongati, she was a former Education Minister for MKU. Mm -hmm. I was in the Women Students Body UN. Mm -hmm. And when we finished campus last year, we realized there's a gap for young women, especially uh, those who are formerly campus leaders. Because most of them, we want, we envision to, to join national leadership because leadership does not stop at campus. Mm -hmm. So while we want to do that, there's normally a gap between uh, the campus leadership and also uh, the national leadership. Mm -hmm. So we thought that uh, we have we have the strength, we have the capabilities, we have the skills. So what if we just come together and be able to to nurture each other and be able to find mentors? Mm -hmm. Because in leadership, it's all about mentorship. Mm -hmm. And in current world, you can't thrive if you work alone. They say if you walk you walk alone, you can go. F um, you can go far, mm -hmm. but if we walk together, we can go very far, farthest. Mm -hmm. So we thought that it would be ideal 
to be able to come together and bring the skills and knowledge we have mm -hmm. and then be able to nurture the young women in leadership. That's why uh, one of our major programs is Women Lead Forum. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we bring those who are experienced in leadership. We have many women leaders who are doing great. Mm -hmm. So we bring them to the young people themselves and they're able to share the experiences, they're able to share the skills. And in that way, when we have the right mentorship, mm -hmm. then we are nurturing the next generation of women leaders. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you look at the current women leaders we have, most of them are, let me say, they're, okay, the, the age, they're a bit old, mm -hmm. and very, we can't expect them to be representing us for long. So we, start need, we need to start nurturing the crop of new leaders mm -hmm. right now. So that's why we came up with Young Women Leaders Connect. Mm -hmm. And um, albeit the name we have, we also have men. It's just not limited to women. I think oh. because of the name, people confuse it. We are just women. Mm -hmm. We have men who believe in our vision. Okay. Yeah, but the, our main vision is want to see young people who participate in decision-making tables. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, now, you've mentioned of, of uh, leadership in the national level, and, and I'm sure in this country, if you have been keen, we have so many women being in the leadership position in the corporate world. Yeah. Uh, are your programs cut, uh, tailored towards national leadership like uh, politics or even in the corporate sector? Now, uh, leadership is all-rounded. Leadership mm -hmm. is, is not just about politics. Mm -hmm. uh, in our programs, we also take up teen pregnancy as one of our issue because we realize that uh, if you want to empower women, the young girls, mm -hmm. uh, one of the major, major issues that affect their education is teen pregnancy. And you've seen the recent st statistics in the country. Uh, so we took it as as the major social issue that we want to handle. And when we do that, we, when you call ourselves leaders, it's an all-rounded thing. We respond to society's pressing issues like the teen pregnancy. Mm -hmm. We also talk about peace and security. We've been involved in conversations around that. And also leadership, the women lead, uh, leadership. Now, we, you find that we can't limit ourselves to politics only mm -hmm. because some members, you'll find someone is good in sexual reproductive health, someone is very good in entrepreneurship, some, someone is good in corporate, mm -hmm. someone is good in politics. Mm -hmm. So what we do, we normally, uh, in our programs, we try to blend in different topics, but all of them under leadership. Because at the end of the day, whatever field you are good at, mm -hmm. you still, we still want to see you being a leader in that in that field mm -hmm. yeah we have very able women in our group and uh, most of them as uh, most of them will be vying for the 2022 elections mm -hmm. and we want to work with them we want to bring more members on boards uh, mentors to work with them because we believe if we do it together all young women who believe themselves as leaders mm -hmm. then we'll be able to to be able to come out as the next generation of uh, very powerful young women uh, if I could have uh, the, the question, who is your biggest mentor? Is it now that you have spoken of the, you have all the programs that you will cater for every kind of leadership? Okay. Who do you believe or who do you have seen for the that time you have been in operation? Who is your biggest mentor? Are they the politicians? Yeah, it, it's a mixture. Okay. Yeah, we have our first forum we had uh, Honorable Milio Diambo. Mm -hmm. She was the guest speaker and she was able to to have to host us a half a day. Mm -hmm. And within that time, we're able to get the sense of the feeling of politics mm -hmm. from the start, because she started as a nominated MP. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to get the feeling, how did she start? Because normally the problem is starting. Yeah. And when you get there, I think it's so easy to get your, to maneuver your ways. Mm -hmm. But when we, uh, when we got her as a mentor, she was able to maybe lead us into how to start, how to position yourself in mm -hmm. leadership, in political leadership. Mm -hmm. Then the next uh, forum we had uh, Miss Betty Adera, the Miss President, mm -hmm. she was also there. And sh for her, she talked about general leadership, including corporate. Mm -hmm. We didn't limit ourselves to politics because, as I said, it's not just about politics. Okay. And we also have many young women that uh, maybe we look up to. Yeah, they may not be in politics, but we look up to them. We have uh, Nafula Kisiangani, we have Ruth Bolo. Mm -hmm. So many of them, they normally come and 
they're able to share the wisdom they have because they have the experience mm -hmm. than ourselves. And uh, what would, would you say are some of the challenges that you're facing in your quest to learn about leadership and becoming better leaders than we have? Okay, we, uh, I want to acknowledge that so far so good. We are thriving because we have women leaders who are ready to support the others, the upcoming ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe the challenge I would say is uh, being <clears throat> being able to being able to to increase the scope mm -hmm. because w our main goal is not just to limit ourselves in the town in the city. We wish that someday maybe we'll we take the discussion to the grassroots to our villages and have also young people mm -hmm. be able to be talked to at that level. Mm -hmm. So the maybe the, ch the main challenge right now is getting the resources to be able to expand the the program mm -hmm. but on on part of support uh, we are glad that we have a very good support from women leaders uh, men supporting you as well yeah we have men uh, in our group we have uh, men who've worked with us mm -hmm. in fact the, we normally don't limit men to activities mm -hmm. uh, most of them maybe you won't see them uh, on these forums but behind this let me say behind the scenes mm -hmm. we have men who support us we have someone who took who takes care of our let me say the general uh, communication mm -hmm. uh, he does he does for us maybe designs com the communication part of it in mm -hmm. is a man we have uh, another one who also helps in advocacy maybe i won't mention all of them but just to be sure that we are very able men mm -hmm. who are supporting us and because they believe in the mission and vision mm -hmm. of our group. And to this end, do you believe uh, the woman in this country is being given a chance to be what they can? The, okay, about get opportunities. For me, I believe whether mm -hmm. you're a, a man or a woman, it's mm -hmm. about creating the opportunities for yourself. Mm -hmm. I think uh, even as much as we have women in leadership, we won't just sit down and say, we are now okay, we are waiting for them to come looking for us. Mm -hmm. So it's about just g stepping out, out of the comfort zone, going for it. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's chance for everyone. So long as you try to position yourself, try to find the opportunity, but we always have enough opportunities for everyone, whether you're a man or a, mm -hmm. a woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There was a narrative going on during the uh, reggae shows. I'm speaking about the BBI. Yeah. Uh, we had um, narratives where my, uh, some of the women would say, if the governor is a male, a deputy should be a female. Yeah. And there was a question: Why can't you go for the female being the governor? you be elected, uh, don't just write. Do you think, or do you think uh, what the allegations or the assumption of if this is this way, then the other way we could be having this, what do you think should be happening? I think that, uh, what was said, it wasn't really about if a male, it was about a male, if a male is a governor, then the, the deputy, female is a, the deputy uh, is, will be a female. Yeah, the deputy is a female and vice versa. Mm -hmm. There's that part of vice versa. Mm -hmm. Because right now we can't, we have uh, female governors, and uh, if you look at the, prog the progression of women leadership in Kenya, mm -hmm. you'll see that the more, the more years go by, the more we get more and more opportunities and more slots. Mm -hmm. So I, I, it, it's just something, okay, it's not, it won't be a shock to see more women in governorship, mm -hmm. in the governor position. Mm -hmm. So you find that... Um, that's why they, ma they made it so clear. If the female will be the governor, yeah, yeah. then the deputy will be the male. The male. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's not one way. Hmm. It's a two-way uh, thing because in the near future, we have, we'll be having, in fact, the two-third two gender rule. Mm -hmm. will be, you'll be, the, man, the man will be the one mm. fighting for it. Very uh, but, but the women have not been voting for it. It has been in parliament for the longest time, and the um, uh, male... MPs were there to vote for it, yes, but uh, the women would not come. Would you say you are the, your own enemy? Uh, no, 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 no. I don't think we had we had women. They, they really did a lot of good work when we were championing for the two third gender bill. Mm -hmm. we, I can't say that women leaders did not come or were not supporting. I didn't see that. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, it, during the fight for two third gender rule, it just demonstrated how women leaders can really work together beyond political parties. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the, the way they were trying to maybe advocate for it, mm -hmm. yeah, it's not, 
uh, I don't think there was a group that opposed it, a woman leader who opposed it to the gender rule. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a good thing that men were also on toes. In fact, it was introduced to the House by mm -hmm. Honorable Dwelle. Mm -hmm. So it is just a demonstration that it's not about, gender is not about women, you okay. know. Gender is about uh, both men and women. So uh, about support, of course, that's just a false notion mm -hmm. <laughs> that is being created by, yeah, but let me call them stereotypes or whatever, but <laughs> okay. it's not true. We have women leaders, they normally come together when it comes to championing for what's right mm -hmm. for women leaders. Because one thing for sure, mm -hmm. uh, in leadership, women ha always have to to stand up for themselves. Okay. If they never do that, then in our equality will be a forgotten word in, mm. in our vocabulary. All right. Um, thank you, Wendy, for coming. Would you like uh, share your final thoughts in regards to women in power and, of course, leadership? Okay. Yeah, your final words. Oh, my final words is um, if you look at the history of this country, <laughs> yeah, from the time we got independence to right now, you will see there's a progression in mm -hmm. women in leadership. It just okay. shows that there's always, there's a bright future in women leadership. Mm -hmm. You know, but now the main challenge is the society still has a problem. It's mm -hmm. the society that still brings us back. Mm -hmm. The patriarchy still exists and it's, the systems are still patriarchal. Mm -hmm. And once, uh, till the day maybe, the society will be able to open their eyes to mm -hmm. be able to realize that there is potential in women leadership, then I think that's the day we'll be mm -hmm. able to now talk about equality, talk about um, uh, making equal share in decision making tables. But as we speak, the fight is still on and women leaders have a, a major responsibility to right. the country and to themselves. All right. Thank you so much for coming and uh, shedding light and, of course, bringing your whole opinion in regards to women and power back home. Thank you so much for keeping us company. She has been my guest, Wendy, our uh, uh, chair of the Young Women Leadership Connect. I'll be seeing you again next week on a Monday. Until then, be safe, uh, wash your hands, sanitize and stay Stay home, come out here if you must. I'll be leaving you in the safe hands of Ken Relbis and DJ Tiska on Why Mashuriki. My name is Dereva Hilary. This has been The Debrief. Goodbye.